Good morning. This week in the press there's been a lot of news about the disaster in Haiti. 200,000 people dead just in an instant. It got me to reading some of the reports that came out of that that the survivors and the rescuers that have that have talked about how they survived and some of the things that they did and the way that they survived uh, tells a story in itself. One rescuer talked about crawling through rubble and pulling people out that were trapped in a, in a small pockets where objects had been crushed beside them and they'd survived in the, what they call the triangle of life. This is the small area that's beside an object that's been crushed that still remains viable if you're in it and you'll survive that area. For example, if as a building collapses and the roof caves in, the objects in the room are crushed, like a chair or a table or, or furniture of some sort. And if you're in that or under the table, you'll be crushed with it. But if you're beside it you'll, you, and you're on the floor, in the, perhaps in the most comp contained area you can, like the fetal position, you've got a very good chance that as the compression takes place, that you remain in the area that's, that's left and you, you, you survive in the triangle of life. Standing in a doorway is not a good place to be. As a building twists, you have the, the frame will, will disintegrate or twist and potentially cut you in half, or the building above or the roof above will just collapse in on you and you'll be, you'll be, just, you'll be uh, killed. Staircases too are often a place that people flee to, and many people die there. As staircases themselves are actually constructed in buildings as separate structures and just attach to the main structure. So as it detaches, the building moves around and detaches, the staircase starts to disintegrate. And staircases, stair treads and rails and other debris starts to fly around as the thing collapses. And people are just sliced in half. Killed instantly as the staircase is uh, moving around. Standing in small bathrooms and objects and things like that are also not good places to be. Again, get next to something that's heavy or an object that, that is likely to you know, give you some uh, space beside it when, once it's crushed. Those that did have survived. Uh, concrete pillars come down and they're in that area beside them. Uh, they're, not, they're not in the direct hit. If you, you can't avoid being a direct hit. In San Francisco, many of the people that were killed in the San Francisco earthquake some years ago in their motor cars on the freeways were killed because they were in their car. Had they got out as the cars were crushed by flying debris, unless they had a direct hit from a, from a pole or something. But uh, if they are just killed by flying debris, the car would be crushed, but they'd be still, they would have survived in the space that's beside the car, immediately beside it. So in the survival of, the, of, of earthquakes and where buildings are collapsing, uh, it's important to know that, and it may just say, save someone's life by knowing that piece of information. If you're lucky enough to be, to be um, in the right place at the wrong time, you've got a, a good chance of making it out. That's what, what it, that's my thoughts for this week. Okay.